So I'm going to talk about one other kind of design, which tries to take this even one step further. XO is not a metric prefix, but it's even smaller than micro. It's trying to make the kernel even smaller and make it so instead of thinking of having these standard libraries that implement the same file system for everyone, which is what you had with the microkernel, that these were sort of fixed, you're allowing each application to pick its own libraries and put it in its own application process. Way back on class one, we define an operating system as a program that manages resources and provides abstractions. What the exokernel project's philosophy was is that that is a bad definition of an operating system. If your goal is to make the operating system small, if your goal is to give applications as much control as possible over resources, the only thing the operating system should do is manage resources. It shouldn't be responsible for providing abstractions. We should let applications pick their own abstractions. Applications should be able to pick whichever abstraction works best. And by getting those abstractions out of the operating system, by removing them from the operating system, we can keep the operating system small and simple and give as much control as possible to programs. So that's the philosophy here. And this is one of several papers about it. The lead author is Dawson. His side job as a grad student was to be a bouncer at a bar. I don't have time to tell my, my stories about that, but you can ask some other time. But an interesting guy. Franz Kashak was actually one of Andy Tenenbaum's students. So he did his PhD in the Netherlands and then was a professor at MIT when this project was started. This is the motivation for this approach, is to say, if we want to build a fast web server by, you know, this was mid-90s, people already cared about building fast web servers. Current OSs make that really hard. A request comes in on the network. It's got to go up to the web server. The web server's got to go to the file system, get the response, send it back to the network. It's going through the OS many, many times to do that. And the web server has no control over how files are organized to make them organized in a way that makes it easy to respond to requests. Well, you can do things like you did in problem set three and start building a cache in your web server, but now you're competing with the cache the OS might have. We talked about there being a cache here and the cache the disk might have. Seems really wasteful to have all those different caches because they don't know enough about what the other layers are doing. So that's the idea with the exit kernels to try to avoid going through all these layers that don't know about the application. Instead, allow the application to put whatever libraries it wants to provide the abstractions that it uses and you only rely on the kernel to mediate resources. So it needs to be able to do things to time share the CPU, to share memory, and to divide the disk. Well, we still want some control over access. Without putting the file system in the kernel, we need to know that when you read from the disk, the program that's doing that is able to read that part of the disk. But we want to have different file systems there. And the way to solve that is to provide a way for the kernel to query the file system. So you've got to make all of these libraries provide a standard interface. And the kernel can query that interface, passing in some metadata. So the metadata is whatever that chunk of the disk might have. The kernel doesn't know what's in the inode or whatever the file system is using. But it can query the file system, and the file system will tell it a set of blocks that are owned by that metadata. And for this to be correct, it has to be deterministic. There's no trust here other than the kernel is verifying that the responses from this owns call are all consistent. So what that means is things like this. So when you initialize, right, so when the file system wants more blocks, well, it should be the case that no one owns that block before you initialize it. And once you initialize it, someone owns it. And when you do things like allocate a disk block, the set that was owned before should increase by adding that new block to that set. So the kernel can verify all these properties are consistent, even though it doesn't know anything about the metadata. It's not trusting the file system, other than it needs to provide this interface, and it needs to be deterministic. So how many extra kernels are there? Are any of you running one? This didn't succeed, at least it has not succeeded yet as, a, as an idea. There are lots of companies that emerged from this project, or at least students that worked on this project, that have been quite successful and have some of the ideas behind the exokernel as part of what made the company succeed, but none of them are really using exokernels. There are pretty hard things to get that to work in practice. So what's next? We've looked at a few designs, and it seems like none of them are really ideal for what we want to do today. The claim in this quote is that we need some radical changes in how we think about what an operating system does and how we implement an operating system. 
And I think this is true. It turns out this quote was from 1969. Most of the OSs we use today are still designed the same way. So I think Butler Lampson was right when he said this in 1969. And it's probably still true and kind of surprising that the things we're using today are as similar as the things he was using in 1969. So my uh, hope is that maybe there's a future for a very different kind of operating system. And instead of having separate processes from the hardware, we could do that with language mechanisms. That means IPC is actually now going to be free. We don't have multiple processes. And we're going to use cryptography to manage resources. Certainly, I don't have such an operating system yet. And maybe, maybe some of you will actually build this or something better. We don't know the answer to this yet. It seemed like microkernels were going to win 92. It seems today like they lost, although in many ways they've actually won. But I think the fact that we need something radically different is probably the right answer. And hopefully some of you will, will be part of creating that. 